language is very important. That gives us the identity who we are. If you don't speak your language, uh, you don't have an identity. Welcome to uh, Gansadag United Church. That was started by my great-grandfather, Sozo Nasakona, known as Joseph Swan. In 1868, he translated the Four Gospels, which is in this book. It's all pure Mohawk. And then in 1980, we renewed a publication. Everything that anyone needs to know about life, whether it's from birth to death, farming, relationships, conflict, wars, all the words are in the Bible. It's not a matter of just saying whether or not you believe in the Bible. It's a good piece of literature. It's a good piece of history. It's a good piece of everything you need to know about life. I taught myself how to read Mohawk. Back in the day, there was no such thing as um, schools to teach Mohawk. When an elder passes away in this community, we lost about maybe a dozen elders so far this year. We just buried one yesterday. He was a fluent speaker. What did he do with his language? He took it with him. And then uh, w when I started to realize I looked at myself and I says, uh, what do I leave behind when I go? So I said, I have to do something. So I developed a dictionary. We began to look at the stacks and stacks of paper that he had already translated from Genesis all the way to Revelations. They just sat on the shelf for many years. We wrote the proposal and sent it in to the United Church through the Indigenous Ministries. I have worked with four different professors in my 17 or more years in translating. My words that I have written in the Bible and it's been looked into my daughter and my granddaughter. So I think it will be very helpful to the other community members. The United Church of Canada will pay the printing of the Mohawk Bible that's coming up next year. It's going to be the first complete Mohawk Bible. I'm so grateful that this church is a member of United Church. United Church has helped this community so much. All the words are there and all the words have been recorded. In the future, people won't be looking to say, what language is this and how did we write it? And this was lost forever, like some of the indigenous languages. This one has been recorded. So there's no reason why our Mohawk language cannot to survive with all those materials leaving behind. Why do I get into a translating the Bible? That came to me in writing this church in 1957, when our own community member, Reverend John Angus, was ordained by United Church. When he came in, I was expecting him to start speaking English. No, he walked right into this pulpit and he started speaking Mohawk. That was so pleasing to my heart and to my mind. I now know what he's talking about. Sometimes in English, you don't quite get it, you know? It's, uh, but in our language, you hear it and you really feel the way he reads the Bible. When I walk out of the church, I feel a lot better because I hear our own language read in the Bible. I said to myself, wow, will I ever be smart enough to translate God's words in my language just like John, Reverend John Nangus is doing? So I think the rest is all history. 
And that's how I got myself interested to continue my great-grandfather, Joseph Swan, to translate the Bible into my language. And my Mohawk name fits right in there. Awanaras. Awanaras means word echo. I'm going to echo my words to the other Mohawk community with this Bible. And I do hope that they will pick it up and start reading it. By focusing on getting back to our grassroots and focusing on things in the Bible, it's about ourselves. Mm -hmm.